The Samsung Galaxy S24 series is just around the corner and as always we pretty much know everything there is to know. What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV. We're going to be breaking down all of the leaks and rumors, Super Saf style so you know exactly what to expect. So as every year we are going to have three new devices, there's going to be an S24, an S24 Plus as well as an S24 Ultra. Now generally speaking the design language is going to be quite familiar, we're going to have the triple ring design that we've seen across Samsung devices. The S24 and the S24 Plus are going to have curved sides whereas the S24 Ultra will be more boxed off like we've seen on previous Note devices as well as the recent S22 and S23 Ultra devices. So nothing new or massively exciting when it comes to the designs. However, the S24 Ultra is going to have a much flatter display. This is something that we've seen across the leaks and rumors. Now, whether you like a curved or a flat display does come down to personal preference. In my opinion, a curved display does look better, but a flatter display is more practical and it also goes better with screen protectors. The S24 and the S24 Plus are rumored to have an Armor Aluminium 2.0 frame, but the S24 Ultra this year is rumored to have a titanium frame. I'll let you guess where they got the idea from. Now, of course, for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, Apple have opted for a titanium frame, and that's been one of the key selling points of the devices. So obviously, Samsung has to compete, and their premium flagship device is now likely to have a titanium frame also. All devices will have an IP68 water and dust resistance rating as expected, and we are gonna have four colors, a black, a gray, a violet, as well as a yellow. Now, there will be three exclusive colors to Samsung.com, a blue, a green, and an orange. The S24 Ultra will have an enclosed S Pen as expected, like we've had on the S22 and the S23 Ultras. We don't have a huge deal of information about this as yet. I think Samsung has kind of reached the peak when it comes to latency and things like that. The S Pen works great on the S23 Ultra, so this is just gonna be a continuation. And that brings us on to the displays. Now, Quite interesting for the displays because the S24 and the S24 Plus are going to have slightly larger displays compared to what we had last year. So the S24 will have a 6.2 inch display compared to the 6.1 inch on the S23 and the S24 Plus will have a slightly larger 6.7 inch display compared to the 6.6 inch on the S23 Plus. Now this may be because we've got slightly smaller bezels in terms of the footprint from what we're seeing from all the leaks and rumors, the S24 Plus is gonna be slightly taller compared to the S23 Plus, but there isn't gonna be a significant size difference whatsoever. The S24 Ultra is going to have the same 6.8 inch size display, so only slightly larger now compared to the S24 Plus, and we might have slightly smaller bezels with that flatter display. Now, another improvement that we've got on the S24 Plus this year is the fact that it's got a higher resolution compared to the S23 Plus Quad HD Plus, similar to what we've got on the S24 Ultra. The S24 will have a full HD Plus display. All three devices will have a high 120 hertz refresh rate, although the S24 Ultra, like we've had on the S23 Ultra, might have a slightly more advanced display, which is gonna be more efficient. It's gonna be able to go all the way down to just one hertz. All three devices are gonna be using AMOLED technology as expected, and will have the Infinity O design, so the punch out at the top. We're not gonna have an under display camera, not something I was expecting because it's not so great on the Fold 5. One big improvement that we're gonna have across all of the devices is the peak brightness, which is now gonna be up to 2,600 nits. That's quite a jump up from the 1,750 nits that we had on the S23 series. And the S23 series did get overtaken over the year by many of the competitors, so it's nice to see that the S24 series is gonna be right up there. As far as we know, we are still gonna have the same Gen 2 Qualcomm 3D Sonic sensor on all devices. I've got no complaints with this, and I am absolutely happy with it, so there's really not a problem here. Whether or not we'll get AI Face ID is something we'll have to see, like we've seen on the Pixel devices, although it is just using the camera, it is using AI to make it more secure. Maybe we'll see this on the S24 series. Right now, let's talk about performance. So on the S23 series, one of the best things about it, in my opinion, was that we had a consistent chipset across the board. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy, a custom chip. 
This year, it looks like Samsung's rewinding and again going for a split between an Exynos chipset, the Samsung Exynos 2400 and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, I've been reading lots of leaks and rumors. It seems like the S24 Ultra at least may have that consistent chipset across the board, the 8 Gen 3, but for the S24 and maybe for the S24 Plus, we will have that split between the Snapdragon and the Exynos chips, and that's gonna be based on your region. If you're in America and South Korea, then you will probably get the Qualcomm chip, but if you're in Europe and Asia, then you will likely get the Exynos chip. Now, I obviously can't comment too much because I've not tried these side by side, but the Exynos chip is supposed to be 70% faster, and has the next gen AMD GPU architecture. So it will be interesting to see how it compares to the 8 gen 3. If it is a split, then I will try to get devices of both variants and try to compare them for you like we've done in previous times. So do subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss it. For the different storage variants and RAM, the S24 is rumored to come with eight gigabytes of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. The S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra are likely to come with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 as well as 512 gigabytes of storage. However, there will be a special one terabyte version on the S24 Ultra. Now for the interesting part, the cameras. As far as we know, the S24 and the S24 Plus will have a similar camera setup, 50 megapixel primary camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide, as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto camera with three times optical zoom and up to 30 times space zoom. The S24 Ultra cameras will have a bit of a tweak from what we're seeing. A 200 megapixel primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel 3X telephoto. However, the big change is around the periscope zoom camera. So the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra have a 10 megapixel 10X periscope zoom camera, which extends all the way to 100 times and lets you take pictures of the moon, which I know a lot of people like. The S24 Ultra is instead now rumored to have a 50 megapixel 5X telephoto camera. Now, I'll let you guess again where they got the 5X from, competing with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the initial reaction that I've been seeing from a lot of people online is that why is Samsung downgrading this telephoto camera? That's one of the unique selling points of the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra, that extended zoom. Now, there's a few things to consider here. Firstly, five times telephoto might be more of a preferred focal length, especially when it comes to portraits, which I think the iPhone 15 Pro Max does excellent in. But also, we have to remember that this is now a 50 megapixel telephoto zoom camera whereas we had 10 megapixels previously. So that potentially means that even at 10X and possibly up to 100X, you are still gonna get good quality, which is gonna be either comparable or better compared to the S23 Ultra. Now, without going into too much geeky detail, if you look at the iPhones, for example, they do have a 2X zoom option, but they don't have a dedicated optical 2X zoom camera. What it's actually doing is it's using the higher resolution camera and just cropping into the middle part of the sensor, essentially giving you lossless zoom. Now, if Samsung's gonna do something similar with the 50 megapixel telephoto camera and giving you a 10 megapixel readout, then essentially that 50 megapixels will allow you to give you a lossless zoom of 10 megapixels. Then you times that by five with the optical zoom and you will essentially have 10x zoom, which will be lossless. Hopefully that makes some sense, but if it doesn't, don't worry guys, as soon as the S24 Ultra is in the studio, we're gonna be doing some detailed, super SAS style camera comparisons of the S24 Ultra versus the competition, as well as versus the S23 Ultra to really test out that zoom. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. Another thing we also have to consider about the cameras overall is the fact that they will have the new image signal processors, the ISPs that will be with the new chipsets, which should produce better images and the new software. Now there's been a whole bunch of talk about AI for the new S24 series and Walmart actually published some pages mistakenly with lots and lots of detail. I'm not gonna show them on here because this video will probably get taken down, but uh, Walmart still have lots of S24 cases, which you can pre-order right now. These case manufacturers are absolutely hilarious because they're the ones that generally leak a lot of this information. 
But anyway, the information that we do have from this leak is that there's going to be lots of AI software, one of which is Nitography Zoom, which is going to give you better low light images when you are zoomed in. Generative Edit is another one, so you'll be able to move or remove objects, fill in empty spaces, and this, I'm assuming, is going to be quite similar to what we've got on the Google Pixels with Magic Eraser and Magic Editor. And another AI feature that's been rumored is Live Translate. So you'll be able to speak foreign languages on the spot right from inside the phone app and be able to get that translated. So this will be very interesting to test out. Right, now the batteries. So the S24 Ultra is rumored to have the same size battery as the S23 Ultra. 5,000 milliamps, I mean, the S23 Ultra has excellent battery life, so I'd assume that the S24 Ultra with the new chipset is also going to be very efficient and give excellent battery life. The S24 and the S24 Plus, however, are rumored to have larger batteries compared to the S23 and the S23 Plus. The S24 is rumored to have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. The S24 Plus is rumored to have a very large 4,900 milliamp hour battery, which is going to be very close to the S24 Ultra. One of the reasons why they may have been able to fit in the larger battery is because the S24 Plus doesn't need space for the enclosed S Pen, which we do have on the S24 Ultra. All devices will support fast charging, but we are going to have up to 45 watts of fast charging on the S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra. We're going to have wireless charging as well as reverse wireless charging, which Samsung calls PowerShare. Right, finally, availability and pricing. So the official unpacked event is rumored to be on the 17th of January, with devices expected to go on sale worldwide from the 26th of January. For pricing, we don't have a huge deal of information as yet, just some leaked Euro pricing. But as far as we can see, pricing for the S24 series is going to be quite similar to what we had for the S23 series. I'm going to put these prices up on screen. They might be slightly higher. And of course, prices will vary based on region. One of the things I can tell you is that Samsung tends to have some crazy pre-order offers with some money off as well as great trading deals. If I do have any of those discount codes and affiliate links, I will leave those down in the description below, as well as on my coverage of the S24 series, which will be coming as soon as the devices are official. If you want to see all of that first, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. What do you guys think of the S24 series leaks and rumors? Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button. If you want to see some coverage of the S23 Ultra, you can see those videos here and here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.